Hello, my name is Maria Larsen. Now I will present our paper Tsugite, Interactive Design and Fabrication of Wood Joints. We propose a system to facilitate the creation of joinery while considering practical criteria, including machine restrictions and material properties. We call it Tsugite, from the Japanese word for joinery. First, let me share the motivation for this work. Wooden joinery is a traditional craft that is used in architecture and for making furniture. The joints are appreciated because of their aesthetic quality and because of their functionality. However, joints are difficult to design due to the geometric complexity. One related work tackles this problem by an interface where the user designs a joint by drawing freeform exterior curves. Other works automatically generate joints with interlocking properties. These works have one common limitation. Materialized results are typically 3D printed or built with Lego. When made from wood, they are handcrafted by professional woodworkers or they are produced by gluing cubes of wood together. Practical criteria for computation of fabrication with wood is not considered. So how are wood joints normally manufactured? There are three common techniques. Manual craft, power tools with jigs, and CNC milling. When manually crafting joints, there are not so many geometrical restrictions as humans have a large range of freedom of motion. Crafted joints are therefore highly customizable. But the production speed is slow and it's very difficult. Crafting joints by hand is an art that can be mastered only after a long training. Another way to manufacture joints is with a jig. A jig is a device that holds and guides a piece of wood while cutting with a power tool. This technique probably has the fastest production speed. But it's hard to customize the joint because you need a different jig for each geometry you want to make. Another technique is CNC milling. Basically, you feed X, Y, and Z coordinates from a computer to control a milling bit which moves around accordingly and removes material. CNC milling, which is the fabrication technique that we use for Tsugite, has some geometrical limitations, but it is relatively customizable, fast, and easy to use. There are some related works that present joint geometry suited for CNC fabrication. However, these are static 3D models of a limited number of joints. What we propose is a design interface for CNC compatible joinery. Let me show a real-time demo of the proposed interface. We focus on the design of a single joint. The design space is a 3D grid of voxels, and the joint is edited by pushing and pulling on the faces like this. Notice that this action is synchronized, so when I remove a voxel here, another one is automatically added over here. The user can change the orientation of a timber by dragging its body. The user can also change the sliding axis, the angle of intersection, the timber dimensions, the voxel resolution, the number of connecting timbers, and more. You might already have noticed the colorful lines and fills that appear. This is real-time graphical feedback about the joint performance. Here is an overview of the eight evaluation metrics that we consider. Let me demonstrate them one by one in the interface. 
Connectivity checks for detached voxels. Bridging checks so that the timber is not divided into two parts. The system also tests whether a joint can be milled out from one direction. And the checkerboard patterns are detected because they are problematic for fabrication and assembly. Arrows at the end of each timber indicate active sliding directions. A red outline gives a hint that the timber is sliding in more than one direction. A yellow fill indicates voxels that are likely to break off, such as in this example. These parts are sticking out perpendicular to the wood fiber direction. Localizing such parts is a simple but effective metric for joint durability. Contact area is relevant for joints intended to be glued, and friction area for joints intended to be held together by friction only. When a joint is invalid, that is to say, it fails to meet the binary evaluation criteria, suggestions are shown here on the right side. These consist of up to four valid joints within one edit distance from the current design. There is also a gallery mode in which the user can browse through valid joints. These are pre-calculated by a complete combinatorial search. You might wonder, considering the exponential growth of possibilities, how can we cover all the combinations? Even for a relatively simple joint between two timbers in a 3x3x3 resolution, there are over 134 million possibilities. We solve this by initiating a geometry as a height field, which greatly reduces the number of possibilities from 134 million to the more manageable number 260,000. The height field restriction is related to the direction constraint of the fabrication setup, which I will talk more about later. Finally, when a design is finished, you can press a button to instantly generate a toolpath for fabrication with a CNC milling machine. In summary, the user sets certain design requirements, including sliding axis and the angle of intersection and so on. Then the user edits the joint manually by pushing and pulling on the faces while receiving real-time feedback and suggestions. Or alternatively, the user selects a joint in the gallery mode. Finally, the joint is exported for fabrication. To test the effectiveness of the graphical feedback, we performed a user study with 20 participants. This study was performed on an earlier version of the system and informed some system improvements. The participants were divided in two groups, one with and one without visual feedback. Then they were given the same tasks to create two geometries. As expected, the group with feedback performed better compared to the group without feedback. They made eight errors compared to 13. Even so, the error count was rather high in the group with feedback. We realized that whereas the graphical feedback is very effective to indicate where there is a problem, it does not tell how to solve it. This observation motivated us to extend the interface with the suggestions and the gallery. Now let me talk a little bit about the fabrication. We restrict ourselves to a CNC with three axes of motion because it is relatively affordable and commonly available. This setup poses two constraints, the inner corner constraint and the direction constraint. The inner corner constraint comes from that a CNC machine equipped with a standard milling bit cannot cut sharp inner corners that are aligned with its milling bit. Such corners will have a rounded fillet. If we export a geometry like this one, with sharp inner corners as they are, 
to a standard path plan software. It will cut the inner corners of the first timber like this and the outer corners of the other timber like this. So when you try to assemble the fabricated joint, the rounded inner corners will collide with the sharp outer corners. There are two standard solutions to this problem. To create deeper inner corners or to round the outer corners. We choose the second strategy because it creates void free joints. This brings us to the key function of our path planning algorithm. It rounds outer corners conditionally when they are located on inner corners, making it possible to assemble the joint. Here is a fabricated example of this. Notice how these four outer corners are rounded to match the shape of these four inevitably rounded inner corners. Here's another example. This is something that I personally find exciting, but it is such a detail that it easily goes unnoticed, so bear with me. Look at these two joints. This timber and this timber have the same design geometry. But as you can see, the corners are actually rounded differently due to different locations of the inner corners. The other machine limitation is the direction constraint. It means that the machine can approach the material from one direction only. In other words, it is not possible to cut somewhere where access is blocked from above. This means that every fabricatable geometry can be expressed as a height field. This observation is the basis for the data structure that I talked about earlier. The direction constraint also gives that a timber can always slide in the direction from which it was fabricated. We leverage this property and impose the limitation that the sliding axis and fabrication axis are shared, and there is only one single axis, like in a stack. So we can create three or more timber joints like this, where the sandwich timbers are locked in, and the first and last timbers can slide out in opposite directions. With the shared sliding and fabrication axis, slidability is reduced, and corner rounding uh, needs to happen only in the XY plane of the CNC. Now I will show some results in form of joint samples and furniture created with the Tsugite system. This is a high resolution, high friction eye joint in non-axial sliding direction. This is a non-orthogonal joint with a user set angular intersection. This is a three timber joint that was found with a combinatorial search for the gallery mode. To show some practical applications of the system, we fabricated a real-sized chair that a person can sit on and the table with diagonal braces for stability. Finally, this is an animation of an interlocking stool demonstrating that it would be possible to fabricate interlocking structures with Tsugite. As for limitations and future work, Tsugite focuses on the joint design only. In the future, it would be helpful to integrate the design of a whole structure. We also leave it to future work to extend Tsugite with more thorough structural analysis such as FEA um, without compromising too much on calculation times. Furthermore, it is not possible to create uh, three or more timber joints that have multiple sliding axes. And due to the voxelized design space, it is not possible to make shapes like a dovetail or freeform curve. Finally, the system is made for frame structures. It does not fully extend to plate-to-plate -to -plate connections. Thank you so much for listening.
Please read the paper for more results and technical details.